Kawasaki's KFX450R continues to walk a fine line between rider-friendly sport quad and race machine. Its power delivery, reverse gear, and 46.1-inch width make it ideal for the trail, while its rigid aluminum chassis, razor-sharp handling, and phenomenal brakes remind you that this machine was built for competition. With just a few add-ons, we turned our Kawasaki KFX450R into an even better trail machine or budget cross-country racer. With a motocross built in the works, we were optimistic about the machine's track potential. However, with fewer numbers of Kawasaki's at the tracks we frequent, we wondered if we were building on a mistakenly overlooked ATV, or if there was something we didn't know. Kawasaki's factory team won some nationals, but their budgets were basically limitless compared to most privateers or local racers. After hours of testing, phone calls, and consideration, here's the setup we came up with to make our KFX450R ready for the track and an impression of the results you can expect from your machine. Dumping a ton of money into your motor is unnecessary for most racers. Too much power will actually make you slower and shorten your engine's life unnecessarily. Adding an aftermarket exhaust, removing the airbox lid and rejetting, or adding an aftermarket fuel management system is all that's required to tap into the full performance potential of most stock engines. The Kawasaki, however, requires the use of an aftermarket intake. There's an abrupt 90 degree bend in the stock intake that disrupts airflow, stifling horsepower production. In comparison, fuel customs intake has only a mild curve and is almost as big around as a Coke can at the smallest point. Fuel customs offers their kits with or without their lidless air box, which offers some protection from beneath the filter. The intake kits come complete with fuel customs eight ply cotton filter and pre-filter, which they swear by. We still wish they offered a foam filter option for dusty conditions though. We chose Texeratex Maximum Ground Clearance A-Arms to widen the front of our machine for a few very specific reasons. Ed Texera is an experienced motocross and desert racer, so he understands the importance of keeping parts light, but doesn't sacrifice on durability. The TIG welded arms are constructed of 4130 chromoly. They make the KFX two and a quarter inches wider per side and move the front wheels forward one half inch. The new arms allow for the use of long travel shocks and more suspension travel, two things the KFX really benefits from. Texera's biggest advantage over their competition is their easy to use caster adjustment system. Being able to add or remove caster or move your upper ball joint rearward or forward allows you to add high speed stability or speed up steering. Most other systems require you to carefully and correctly measure the front end on a flat surface in order to prevent misalignment. Texera's five position adjustable notched upper A-arm and castle washer system let you choose between three and eight degrees of caster. Caster changes take less than three minutes and the process is virtually foolproof with no need to measure. To widen the back of our KFX, we utilized the Lone Star Racing Excalibur Pro Racing Axle. The Pro model received a new profile for increased strength and a new hard chrome finish, which has a stainless steel like appearance. The axle allows you to widen your machine between 1.5 and 4.5 inches using three one half inch spacers per side. The axle has a true unlimited lifetime replacement warranty against bending or breaking, which can be transferred in the future should you decide to sell your axle or machine. While overspinning on your engine can be a mistake, it's hard to overspend when it comes to suspension. Racetech suspension components are some of the highest quality in the industry. Our Racetech GS3 shocks feature 46 mm zinc plated steel bodies and chromed 5 8 inch steel shafts. Most of the remaining components are constructed of aircraft grade aluminum, while the eyelets feature stainless steel spherical hind joints. The internals are comprised of Racetech's famous gold valve, which was developed to prevent oil restriction at the piston, helping prevent high speed harshness. Custom valving and spring rates are selected based on your rider weight, type of riding, ability level, and of course, specific chassis setup. Chassis setup also determines the shock's length. For our Texera arms, Racetech built us 18 and 3 4 inch long front shocks and a stock length 17 inch rear shock. The Zero Preload Race Series GS3 shocks feature high and low speed compression and rebound adjustment. A steering stabilizer acts like suspension for your steering. We carried Precision Racing's Pro Model Steering Stabilizer over from our cross country build, where it really helped us get a handle on the stock KFX's twitchy front end. The Precision Steering Stabilizer was the first that allowed you to fine tune the bump absorption quality of the center and sides of your ATV steering individually, 
Their new Pro model benefits from a built-in reservoir to compensate for thermal expansion, reducing fade during long, hot races. The addition of longer A-arms requires the use of longer brake lines. Streamline stocks brake lines in various colors for most applications, or they can build whatever length you need. We installed a set of blue plus 3-inch dual lines up front with a standard length line out back. Our front brake lines were secured to the upper A-arms with Streamline's clean-looking billet brake line clamps. Fast Company's Brake Return Spring Kit allows you to fine-tune your rear brake pedal's resistance while eliminating the stock return spring. The kit is also claimed to minimize the amount of debris reaching your master cylinder. The clevis at the bottom of the rear brake return spring is an area that develops play over time. Fast Company's rear brake clevis eliminates this unwanted play. Both it and the return spring bucket are made of billet aluminum and are available in a number of anodized colors. We wanted a set of wheels that would last for the life of our KFX, both structurally and cosmetically. Hyper suggested that we run their CF3 single beadlock wheels at both ends. The CF3s feature a billet center sandwiched between two carbon fiber halves, sealed together with rubber O-rings. Our test riders have attested that the strength of these wheels based upon personal experience. Should you damage one, they are completely modular, which means whichever part of the wheel is damaged can be replaced individually, with no need for special tools or the expense of replacing an entire wheel. Also, unlike powder-coated aluminum wheels, the color of the Hyper wheels or their various colored beadlock rings will never scratch or chip away. To keep power loss through rotating mass down, we wanted to make sure we ran the lightest tires possible. ITP's Quad Cross MX Pro lights were designed to work best on hard packed track surfaces, which are common in ATV racing. Compared to the standard Quad Cross MX tires, the Pro model Quad Crosses feature a softer rubber compound for better hookup. Their two ply design makes the front tires one pound lighter each, while the rears are two pounds lighter per tire. These tires alone saved us six pounds in rotating mass and have proved themselves capable of winning Pro Nationals in the past. Another product that we carried over from our cross-country build was Precision Racing Shock & Vibe Bar Clamp. They help reduce vibration transfer to the handlebars by Kawasaki's aluminum chassis and help reduce impacts felt through the handlebars. They also raise the handlebars around one inch, creating a more comfortable cockpit. Spider Grip Slimline SLX Grips are designed to help dampen vibration with their dual-layer design. The surface compound was designed to be tacky to the touch, keeping you in better contact with the machine with less effort. To protect ourselves from other riders and from our machine, we installed a set of Blingstar's Notorious Nerf Bars and Heel Guards. The Notorious Nerfs are very light and feature closely spaced nets that wrap around the frame for increased safety. The innovative Notorious Heel Guards feature a two-piece design with an elastomer between the two pieces. This helps prevent the cracking common on many aftermarket aluminum heel guards by allowing some flex. The netted heel guards come with an aluminum heel plate and provide plenty of room. While the KFX's chassis is tough, we don't like the idea of the bottom being beaten on. The genuine Kawasaki chassis skid plate is one of the few on the market to cover the entire underside of the frame from front to back. We also added a genuine Kawasaki swing arm skid plate to the build specifically for use on tracks where rocks often pop up. Both items feature thick aluminum and fit precisely. G4, formerly go for Graphics, has been producing graphics since 1999. They offer a ton of styles that can be totally customized with lots of color combinations. Plus, they can add sponsor logos to your graphics. G4 also offers number plate backgrounds in their various styles with custom colors, rider name, or logo options. We ordered their newly released Phoenix style graphics and number plate backgrounds in a wild looking green, black, and yellow combo. G4's vinyl is impressively thick and durable. If you take the time to prep your plastic properly, that will last you a good long time. So what do you get when you eliminate all of the external restrictions from the KFX 450R's engine and add on a pro caliber chassis and suspension setup? You get a machine that makes going fast really easy. At this level of tune, the KFX engine is one of the easiest to ride in the 450 class. While most unquirked 450 center their power from the mid-range up, the Kawasaki's power is focused around the bottom and in mid-range. The power is a lot like stock, but thanks to HMF and Fuel Customs, there's a lot more of it. 
Power comes on sooner than most other 450s. It pulls with authority out of the hole. Then power just keeps building with no abrupt hit, pulling hard throughout the mid-range. Just as the motor begins screaming, you feel the power start falling off rapidly. You quickly learn to upshift a little sooner on the Kawasaki, and it rewards you for it. With such good low-end torque, you don't have to carry as much momentum through corners with short runs at the next jump. This helps open up the inside line, creating more passing opportunities. If you're a gear or two too high, the KFX engine could care less. It almost pulls like a big more sport quad down low. There's enough power in the mid-range to hang with most local racers down long straightaways and over big jumps. You could lose drag races into turns, however, if you try and rely on the engine's overrev instead of upshifting. Ride the KFX a gear higher than the other 450s and you'll get the most out of it. The power signs off early, so we never found ourselves bouncing off the rev limiter, which will help this motor last a good long time. Dave Trimble felt that it was all he needed to be competitive, and Chase was amazed at the difference between the stock and uncorked engine. Chase thought the National B riders and up may benefit from a bit more top end power. Switching to KX450 dirt bike cams from 2008 makes a big difference in upper mid range and top end power, while maintaining Kawasaki's standard for reliability. For most local racers, though, this engine is fun and easy to ride, allowing you to ride your full potential, not being held back by a machine that's too much to handle. The wider tech Ceratec front end and Lone Star axle increase stability in corners and at high speed. With four and a quarter degrees of caster dialed into our Texera A arms, coupled with long travel race tech shocks that don't pack under hard braking, the nervous tendency of the stock front end was gone. You can charge corners harder with later braking, thanks to the machine's increased stability and steering predictability. Although high speed stability was much improved, there was no trade off when it came to steering, as this KFX can still cut an inside line with the best of them. The KFX has a little taller backbone than some of the other 450s. This aids in comfort and eases the transition between sitting and standing, especially late in the moto. The downside is that it requires the use of a little bit more body English when cornering aggressively. Top level racers may want to have their subframes lowered to further lower the machine's center of gravity. In the air, the KFX feels light and maneuverable. When you come in for a landing, the race tech shocks will take the big hits. Different suspension builders set their shocks up differently. We found race tech to spring their shocks a little on the firm side. They're smooth on the downside and stiff enough to save the day when you come up short on a big jump. With a wide range of adjustments and a little tuning, the GS3 shocks on our machine tracked straight in the whoops and the choppy sections. They provided a predictable, confidence-inspiring ride, never kicking, deflecting, or doing anything unexpected to take you off your game. For fast, smooth tracks with big jumps, these race tech shocks were on target. For loamy or sandy tracks that develop lots of chop though, we might consider a slightly softer mainspring up front. Precision's Pro Model Stabilizer did a superb job of keeping bumps to the front wheels from transferring back to the handlebars. Another benefit of the stabilizer is that you can actually use it to increase or decrease traction in corners for better hookup or easier sliding. We'll show you how in an upcoming test of the Precision Pro Model Stabilizer. ITP's Quad Cross MX Pro Light tires perform superbly at both tracks we tested at, with both ends hooking up well in intermediate to hard pack conditions. In loam, you'll run into some front end push, and you'll need to use precise clutch control on deeply tilled starts. For tracks that pack in, these tires could definitely get you to the checkered flag first. With lightweight and excellent handling characteristics, they're a great race tire. The Kawasaki's brakes continue to offer plenty of power, now enhanced with streamlined steel braided brake lines. We're braking later on our modified Kawasaki, so the extra braking power is greatly appreciated. Dave and Chase both like the ergonomics of the Kawasaki. The precision shock and vibe bar clamp really helps isolate the handlebars from the vibration of the engine and aluminum frame. They do a good job of reducing torsional impacts felt at the handlebars that can be painful to the wrists. The shock and vibe clamps raise the bars around an inch, opening up the cockpit for taller riders. The Blinkstar heel guards offered plenty of heel room, and although the stock seat is too firm for trail riding, it seems kind of at home on the track. Opened up, the Kawasaki has a competitive engine for most racers, with the kind of power that allows you to make the most of it. The way our machine was set up, 
The chassis and suspension are more than a match for the engine, allowing you to push harder without getting yourself in over your head. This build is a tale of durable efficiency. The chase summed up best when he remarked, I wonder why we don't see more of the Kawasaki's at the races. If you take the time to set your Kawasaki up properly for the track, we think you'll be impressed with how well it works. Your competition, on the other hand, may not share your enthusiasm.